Welcome to this short introduction to Blazor. This new Microsoft framework uses a unique approach to leverage your existing c -sharp and .NET skills to create web UIs. Blazor supports a server-side architectural model that uses SignalR to communicate with the client, but the videos in this introduction show how to run c -sharp directly in the browser. The technology that makes this possible is called WebAssembly an open standard supported directly by current browsers on desktop and mobile platforms. You write c -sharp and Razor code instead of JavaScript, and the compiled app runs natively on the client. The following demo introduces you to the concept by setting up a small spa with a few Blazor components. I have the latest preview version of Visual Studio 2019 running, and I begin by creating a new project of type Blazor app. I assign a name and I select the template Blazor WebAssembly app from the list. The solution that has been created contains a few demo items in the folders Pages and Shared. I recommend to check these out. I leave them in place for this demo, but I move on to create my own first Blazor component now. As a simple getting started sample, I'll visualize a to-do list and implement some basic user interaction. The first component will show a single to-do item. This is a reusable element, so I add it to the shared folder. I use the template Razor component and call the new file todoitem.razor. As you know, the Razor markup language is a superset of HTML. I add a small snippet that shows a checkbox and a piece of text. Now I change the existing page index.razor to show this new component. I run the application, and it comes up in the browser. My simple component renders correctly. Of course, it's completely static at this time, so I go back to Visual Studio to change that. The directive at code at the end of the component file denotes a code block. I add some code to declare two variables, and then I change the HTML to pull in the values of these variables to render with the component. I rebuild the app, switch back to the browser, and reload. The checkbox is now checked by default since I initialized the field done as true. In reality, I expect values like the two in my example to be passed to the component from the outside. Blazor supports this with the help of an attribute. I modify the code to use public properties for the values decorated with the parameter attribute. I also add a calculated property that returns the name of a CSS class depending on the state of the item. Using these new elements, I change the HTML accordingly. Finally, I edit the site.css file and add a class to mark a to-do item as done. I build and reload the browser. Once more, the to-do item is rendered correctly. There is one snag, however. When I check and uncheck the checkbox, the display of the text does not change. This happens because there is no two-way data binding yet. The value from the property done is retrieved once when HTML is rendered, and it is never changed when I click the checkbox at runtime. To change this behavior, I replace the attribute checked with at bind for the checkbox. This attribute has a special meaning, and I'll look at it in detail later. Most importantly, it activates two-way data binding. I remove the at sign for the done property name, since the attribute understands automatically that this refers to a C-sharp code element. I build and reload again, and now the to-do item clearly shows its state change when I check and uncheck the checkbox. The final remaining step to complete this first part of the sample is to assign the values for the to-do item from the outside. I remove the default values from the component code. Instead, I assign a value to the text property where the component is instantiated in index.razor. I add a second item at the same time. I build and reload again, and the main page now displays a short list of two to-do items. 
To represent a to-do item in the sample application, I create a simple model class and a separate file in the folder model. I edit the file imports.razor on the top level of the project to add a line for the new model folder. This allows me to work with the types in that folder when I write component code. I create a new component called to-do list. This component will be initialized with a list of to-do items, so I add a parameter right away. To render the component, I loop over the items in the collection and show a to-do item component instance for each one. I'm using a table for the list of to-dos, so everything is arranged in a tabular format. I go back to the to-do item component and change its rendering to a TR for the table and TDs for the individual elements. I add a dynamic CSS class for the table row. Now I'll change index.razor again and pass the collection of to-do items down to the to-do list component. At this point, it becomes clear how a complete Blazor application can be made up of hierarchical structures of components. Of course, in reality, the collection would still be retrieved separately. At runtime, the list of to-dos is rendered correctly as a table. When I check or uncheck an item, the styles change accordingly. To complete the picture of this sample project, I will now create a feature to add a new item to the list. I begin by creating a new component called New Item Entry. I add markup to show a text editor and a button. I'm taking advantage of bootstrap CSS classes to format everything nicely. You can see two property values included. I add a piece of code for the property text and the calculated property button disabled. This is the basic setup of the component. I modify to-do list to include it. When the user clicks the Add button, or uses the Enter key, I want to call an event handler to handle the logic of persisting the newly entered item. I add the event handler as a parameter to the new item entry component, and I create a method that calls the event handler passing the text. Now I can use the method directly for click events on the button. For the Enter key handling, I add an event handler that tracks key presses in the editor control. I reuse the new item method when an Enter key press is detected. The handler is connected to the editor control using the OnKeyPress attribute. The last step remaining is to handle the OnNewItem event and modify the collection of to-dos attached to the list. I edit the to-do list component and add an event handler. The code adds a new to-do instance to the collection. Then it calls the method state has changed to make sure Blazor re-renders the component to reflect the change to the data. Finally, this method is linked to the new item entry instance. Back in the running application, I can now enter new text into the input field. When I hit enter or click the add button, a new list element is created. This concludes the Blazor introduction. You've seen how to create Blazor components and how to use them to build simple application structures. That's it for this video. Make sure to keep up to date with all of our YouTube content by subscribing and ringing the bell. Thanks for watching.